And I wanted to show you this histological model too, sort of like we had with the liver. This is the wall of the intestine. <coughs> so this part right here is the mucosa layer. This is the submucosa layer. And this is the muscularis externa layer. And then you would have serosa out here. Okay. With your uh, mucosa, you have your epithelium. Okay, like this. Now, the epithelium of the intestine is sort of like the stomach, it is in big folds. Okay, and these folds are called microvilli. Or, I'm sorry, these folds are called villi. These are large folds of epithelial tissue. So this is your simple columnar. Now on the surface of your simple columnar you'll have microvilli, which will, all of these things just increase surface area. So you have the plica circularis, which are the really big folds, huge folds of the tissue, whole tissue itself. The villi, which are the folds of epithelium, and then the microvilli on the surface of the simple columnar epithelial cells that are uh, pieces of the plasma membrane. All these little cells are mucus cells, the little blue dots. Inside each villi, so there's one, two, three, four, five villi in this view, you have a lymphatic vessel called a lacteal. You also have artery and vein. Okay, so this artery is depositing blood for the cells. The vein is picking up nutrients that is being absorbed through these um, simple columnar epithelial cells and taking it to the hepatic portal venous system. The lacteals are going to be picking up the fats that come in through your food, taking them through the lymphatics and then putting them into the blood. So this is your lamina propria here. Notice you have this big blue structure in the lamina propria. This is a Peyer's patch. So that's one of your lymphoid aggregates that protects your um, body from pathogens. This little thin layer of muscle in pink is called the muscularis mucosa. And this muscularis mucosa basically um, helps these glands way down at the bottom of these crypts to um, empty their contents. This is the submucosa. In some parts of the small intestine you'll have some submucosal glands, which is what you can see here, like Bruner's glands in the duodenum. You also have some uh, blood vessels and some nerves as well. With your muscularis externa in most of the digestive system and all of the intestine, you have two layers. You have an inner circular layer and an outer longitudinal layer, and these muscles allow for segmentation and peristalsis to help you move food through the digestive tract. And you have um, some intrinsic nerves that will control these uh, muscle layers. So this is part of your enteric nerve plexus here. And then you have your adventitia out here, which connects the digestive tube to the surrounding tissue. And notice you have your arteries and veins and your lymphatics running through all of these tissues as well. OK, with this guy, I wanted to kind of do an overall look at the abdomen and some of the organs and blood vessels. OK, so here's the liver. Here's the gallbladder. Here's the stomach. Here's the spleen. Here's your jejunum, ilium, coming into the cecum here. So this is your ileocecal valve, ascending colon, hepatic flexure, transverse colon, splenic flexure, descending colon, and then it would go down to the rectum. You can see your tinea coli here. You can see epiploic appendages. You can see haustra bumps. You can see part of your greater omentum hanging off the edge of the stomach. We can see our gastro-omental arteries. This would be right. This would be left. Now we can take some of these organs out. Oh, falciform ligament here. Ligamentum teres right there. There's your inferior vena cava bare area of the liver, right and left lobes. Eek. Stomach's going to fall out too. 
now if we look down inside here, if my thing will cooperate, you can see your celiac trunk again with its three branches, splenic going to the spleen, common, hepatic artery here, and then the one going up would be left gastric. And if we look here at the stomach, you can see that left gastric right here. Okay. Remember your common hepatic is going to give off a branch, gastroduodenal, and will continue as proper hepatic and go right into the liver. If you look at the liver, we can see that proper hepatic artery right there, as well as the hepatic portal vein, the common bile duct, the cystic duct, the hepatic duct, the gallbladder, the cystic artery. We can also see superior mesenteric artery and vein peeking out from underneath this uh, pancreas here. So here's our pancreas, the body, the tail, the head, main pancreatic duct, that white structure, accessory pancreatic duct, here's your duodenum with your plica circularis, and I don't know if it shows up for you, but that is your duodenal papilla. You can see the common bile duct right here. So that superior mesenteric artery continues. Okay, so this was in here like this. If we take this off and turn it around, we can see that superior mesenteric artery here. Okay, and then that's going to come down and give off your branches. Middle colic, going to the transverse colon, with marginal, and straight, the little straight ones. <coughs> right colic, ascending colon, iliocolic here, really. I would say this one is right colic, this is iliocolic. And then your ileum and jejunal branches aren't on here, but those would be going to the ileum and jejunum. If we look back inside of our abdomen, and we take the pancreas out, you can see here, okay, there's where your superior mesenteric came off. That was your celiac trunk. And then right here is your inferior mesenteric artery. So it's smaller than superior and comes off much lower. And then if we look back at our intestines, there you can see your inferior mesenteric artery. Notice it's below superior. And then with its three branches, left colic, sigmoid, and superior rectal. And then, of course, you have marginal and straight on this side as well. And then there's your rectum down there. Okay, coming off of the abdominal aorta, you also have some more vessels, and we'll look at kid I'll do kidneys next time, but you can see the renal artery. And these would be paired, so you'd have a right, <coughs> a right and a left renal artery, and a right and a left renal vein. You also have your adrenal vessels, and here you can see an adrenal vein and a small adrenal artery. And then if you look a little farther down, you have this artery right here on either side, right and left, gonadal artery. In this case, we have a female, here's a uterus, so these would be ovarian artery. Right ovarian artery and vein, left ovarian artery and vein. This is a ureter, okay, and this is your common iliac artery where your abdominal aorta splits.